Probability sampling is a method of sampling that uses a random selection, so that all units or cases in the population have an equal probability of being chosen. In order to have a random selection method, you must set up some process or procedure that assures that the different units in your population have equal chances of being selected. The different types of probability sampling includes simple random, systematic, stratified, cluster, and multi-stage sampling. Simple random sampling is a probability sampling in which every member of a study population has been given an equal chance of selection. For example, if you have a list of all the members of the population, you can't look at the list when choosing. You must avoid the bias in selecting the samples. To do random sampling properly, here are some ways to do it. One is to list all possibilities on paper, cut them up, and then draw a sample from a hat or fishbowl. Remember, you can't look at the pieces of paper when drawing the sample. You may also upload all the members on the list. Then draw from an online spinning wheel. When the spinning wheel stops, you get your random sample. You may also use random name picker sites. Clicking the button gives you a randomly selected name. Another method is using the table of random numbers or some computer software or mobile app to generate random numbers. All of the numbers in turn corresponds to each member of the population. Systematic sampling It is a probability sampling procedure that involves selecting every K element from a list of population elements after the first element has been randomly selected. It is also referred to as systematic random sampling. Here's how to do a systematic sampling. First, the population must be listed in a random order. Then, number the units in the population from 1 to N. Next, compute or decide on the N, the sample size. Let's assume that we have a population that only has n equals 100 people in it, and that you want to take a sample size of n equals 20. Then compute for the interval size. This is done by dividing the total number of population, by the sample size. In this case, the interval size, k, is equal to, 100, divided by, 20, which is equals 5. Now, select a random integer from 1 to 5. In our example, imagine that you randomly chose 4. Now, to select the samples, start with the fourth unit in the list, and take every fifth since k equals 5. You would be sampling units 4, 9, 14, 19, and so on, up to 99 and you would wind up with 20 units in your sample using systematic random sampling. Let's have another example. Here is the list of members of the population, arranged randomly, and each member assigned with numbers. The first draw, must be randomly selected. For example, number 2. The random selection, must follow the methods on how to do simple random sampling. You may draw from a hat, a fish bowl, use an online spinning wheel, random name picker sites, or any other random selection techniques. Next, now select every fifth element. Thus, our selection list would be, number 2, number 7, number 12, number 17, number 22, 
number 27, and number 32. Stratified Sampling A probability sampling procedure that involves dividing the population in groups, or strata, defined by the presence of certain characteristics, and then random sampling from each stratum. It is also known as stratified random sampling, or proportion random sampling. Here's how to do stratified random sampling. First, group the study population into strata, or into groups, that share a given characteristic. Then, enumerate each group separately. Next, compute or decide on the sampling size based on the total population. For example, the sample size is 10. Then, compute for the sample per strata by proportion. Sampling per strata equals strata size divided by total population size, multiplied by sampling size. Thus, in our example, in the first group we'll get three samples, also three on the second, two from the third, and also two samples from the fourth group. Then, randomly sample within each strata. So from the first group we will get three random samples, also three random samples from the second, two random samples from the third, and also two random samples from the fourth group. Because the groups are more homogeneous within group, than across the population as a whole, we can expect greater statistical precision, less variance. And, because we stratified, we know we will have enough cases from each group, to make meaningful subgroup inferences. Cluster Sampling a probability sampling procedure that involves dividing the entire population into clusters, then randomly selecting clusters of elements from a population, and subsequently selecting every element in each selected cluster, for inclusion in the sample. Cluster sampling is a good option, if data collection involves visits to sites that are far very apart. It is also known as cluster random sampling, or area random sampling. When we have to sample a population that is dispersed across a wide geographic region, you will have to cover a lot of ground geographically in order to get to each of the units you sampled. Imagine covering most of the residents of a country in order to conduct personal interviews. Having respondents who come from all parts of the state, your interviewers are going to have a lot of traveling to do. There will be difficulty visiting all the sites, due to distance, time, financial, and other constraints. It is for precisely this problem that cluster or area random sampling was invented. To do a cluster random sampling, we obtain a list of all regions in the state. Then random sample the regions from the list. For example, if region 2 and 7 were randomly selected, we must obtain a list of people from region 2 and 7. Then contact each of those in the list since they are the members of the sample. Multistage sampling A probability sampling procedure that involves several stages, such as randomly selecting clusters from a population, then randomly selecting elements from each of the clusters. We can combine the simple methods in a variety of useful ways. That help us address our sampling needs in the most efficient, and effective manner possible. Consider sampling a state for face-to-face -face interviews. As the first stage of the process, we would want to do some type of cluster sampling, possibly by geographical regions of the state. Then, we might set up a stratified sampling process within the clusters. In this case, we would have a two-stage sampling process, with stratified samples within cluster samples. 
consider the problem of sampling students in grade schools. We might begin with a national sample of school districts stratified by economics and educational level. Within selected districts, we might do a simple random sample of schools. Within schools, we might do a simple random sample of classes. And, within classes, we might even do a simple random sample of students. In this case, we have four stages in the sampling process, and we use both stratified and simple random sampling. By combining different sampling methods, we are able to achieve a rich variety of probabilistic sampling methods, that can be used in a wide range of research contexts.